you enjoyed some of those goofy polls. Again, my name is Scott. I'm the marketing guy here at BP of Microsystems. And, and I'm Colin Harper. I'm the director of sales and product management. Yeah, so we're really excited that you guys were able to come. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our one of our newest uh, systems, the 3901 automated programming system that BPM launched last year in October. Yeah, the market has really responded favorably to the machine. You know, it's a price point at which we haven't had our full featured equipment in the past right. and had a lot of momentum with the with the product and uh, really happy to introduce the machine to a lot more folks as yeah. well. Uh, well, what's next? Let's, well, that's a good question. I, I have a feeling Whisper Teach may be next. Oh, Whisper Teach. That's right. We talk a lot about that. Yeah. So a little bit about Whisper Teach. Yeah. Give, the me, old... the, give me the big picture. What is okay. Whisper Teach? Well, let's let's start back a little bit more in history. All right. Historically, the teach process. Well, number one, it's fundamental to all pick and place handlers or in in our industry. You need to teach all the sockets, all the input outputs, and and even peripheral processes like laser marking. Okay. And X, X and Y, fairly state for, straightforward because of just modern pick and place machines. Very accurate as, as well. Yeah. But the Z has always been a tr uh, challenge because really it requires the operator to have a little bit of skill and knowledge. Okay, and the Z is the? Z is the up and down. Okay, up and keep down, it keep, it, yeah, keep it yeah, simple nozzle. for the marketing guy. So, the uh, the Z height is what which Whisper Teach teaches is that that height between the nozzle tip and the top of the device. So you can imagine you teach it too low, you're potentially going to damage the the device because you go through the device. Mm -hmm. If you teach it too high, you might have pick and place problems throughout the job, inconsistencies. If right, you will. right, right. Now our cyber optics camera does overcome alignment issues, and that's the beauty of having the on-the-fly alignment camera. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you might have problems during the job if you have teach problems. Right. And you know, one thing about modern pick-and-place machines, they're very repeatable. So if you have a human that teaches the old-fashioned way, and they teach it incorrectly, what do you think happens? Uh, you're going to you're going to do the same thing over and over again. Exactly. So, yeah, gonna, that could be that could be very problematic. So, especially if you have some kind of latent failure, maybe you're bending pins and you don't know it, or in, or or perhaps in a worst case scenario, there's a, a small die crack that could leave. You might get a green light at programming, and then what happens in the future because of this compromise, this latent failure? You might have the the actual device the the widget, if you will, right. that's being manufactured that fails prematurely. So we took all the guesswork out mm -hmm. with Whisper Teach. Okay. Now that's a mouthful. I'm going to show the the Whisper Teach process on the machine. It's going to happen like that. Yeah. But then I know you have a video. You'll queue up and you can talk through that process as well again. I'm going to try. Uh, I guess the last thing I will say yeah. is that we we talked about operators and their capability. Um, a human hair is about 50 microns in diameter. Okay, I don't know anything about that. Don't know anything about human hairs. Uh, it, a, the vision capability of human being, typically the perception is about 40 microns. And that's, that's a young man, right? Young man, that's right. But, uh, you know, Whisper Teach can teach to within 15 microns accuracy. Wow, crazy. So that tells you that it's really an accurate thing. And the most important thing, it's really operator independent. Okay. You can have your first shift guy do a great job and know everything out of the machine. The person on the second shift, maybe they're not quite as good. It doesn't matter. The machine doesn't care. Nice. Okay. okay. So we're taking the so we're taking the human element out. We are of it. taking the human element out. So what we're gonna do, can you see the screen okay here, Scott? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say okay, the job ended. I guess I should have done that earlier. It's going to give us a job summary. Mm -hmm. And what the job summary does, it gives you all the key statistics, the yield and, and DPH and that type of thing. And often customers use this to judge, uh, well, how efficient their process yeah. is. And that's generated every single time it runs? It is. Nice. And there's a log file that you can retrieve that information as well. All right, so we're going to go to auto handler and teach. Okay. And then What's happening, the machine is, is saying, or it recognizes I'm trying to teach, so it's going to look and see what it has installed, All right. and it's going to identify that. So in this case, 
we're going to teach programmer site one. Okay. And then it just walks you through the menu. So I select teach. And it's going to give me the option for uh, the sockets. All right. So for brevity's sake, I'm just going to teach 1A. And you know, Scott, the process is the same as far as whisper teach, whether you're teaching the job the first time or a job in this case, we're verifying. Mm -hmm. It'll show you what happens with whisper teach. Okay. So I say next after selecting socket 1A, I do have to identify the pin one orientation okay. relative to the socket and the device. Say next. And now it's gonna say, please ensure that there is a target device in the primary socket 1A. So this is one thing the operator does have to do with Whisper Teach. They have to provide a device in socket. Okay. So I'm so gonna use we're, my- we're keeping, we're keeping somebody employed, that's We good. are. So simply place the device. I'm going to give you a minute to replace your camera so yeah. the folks watching remotely can see. Yeah, because it does happen pretty quick. It does. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, looking good. Paul's all set. All right, so I'm going to say next, and the machine takes over from that point. So you can see the nozzle goes down. It identifies the top of the device using this electro pneumatic circuit that we have in Whisper Teach. Wow, that's, and, and it's, it's done. It's done. Okay. Yeah. So you can imagine, that was what, eight seconds, roughly? If you uh, had eight sockets, it, it's going to be very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's now asking me to remove the device. Scott, I'll tell you what, I know you have a video that shows some of this in slow motion. Why don't you, why don't you take them through that yeah. while I uh, change the machine? Sounds great. I will do that. So Paul, Paul is uh, Paul's working behind the scenes, making sure that everything's running. So we've got we've got a video on our website. You know what is Whisper Teach? So it talks about again that that critical Z height, uh, and and that you know what you just saw happen so fast. We want to slow it down so you can actually see what is going on. So this is actual speed on our 4910. Uh, we're slowing it down. And this is actually running on a uh, on a CSP device, so one of those really, really tiny. But we've got a dime there. Uh, it's much, much smaller than a dime. Uh, so what it's doing is it's coming down. It's making contact or very close to contact. Then it's going to re-verify that height, and then it's going to pick it, spin it, make sure that it's oriented correctly. You see that it made a slight adjustment to put it put it right on the center of the device, and again. Now it's taught. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, uh, uh, let me, can we stop that, Paul? Thank you, Paul. Uh, what we did a few years ago at one of our trade shows in, in Munich is that we actually did what we call the Whisper Teach Challenge. And what we did was we asked uh, people to come by our booth and to try to do a manual uh, teach. Uh, and Scott, using, if I could, yeah, yeah. And what you say, what you're saying, manual teach the old-fashioned way, yeah, the, the old way most way. people, most customers have to do it on other machines, right? That's right. That's or right. even legacy BPM machines, but the the current models all have Whisper Teach. Yeah, and so what we did is we plotted a graph of, and this is the actual results as they came in, plotted a graph of all the people that that tried to do the Whisper Teach. Uh, let's pause it right there for a sec. You know, most people talk too high because most people, and it's understandable, are, are kind of skittish about driving that nozzle down into the, into the device, uh, and we can keep it going. If, if you teach it too high, it can cause misalignment errors. Our, our cyber optic camera kind of overcomes some of that stuff. But again, the teaching too low, that's really problematic because you can introduce latent uh, failures or failures, you know, just on, on, the, on, the, on the line. So. And again, comparison, that's a human hair that I know th nothing about. The unaided eye is 40 microns. Whisper Teach is within 15 microns. So very, very close, very accurate, very repeatable. Let's you see. know, Scott, we talked about uh, scalability earlier. Uh, one of the advantages that BPM has, you know, we manufacture the machines here in Houston. 
our design team is upstairs, our manufacturing team downstairs. We're right. kind of we're kind of in the middle. We and, are in the middle. Uh, so, you know, one of the advantages of that is we can do a lot of things with our machines. Maybe that someone who outsources to another machine manufacturer cannot do. Okay. So this machine. The two sites, eight sockets, very productive, a million devices plus per year, I think very easily. Yeah. Multiple shifts, you can increase that. You need more socket capacity. We talked about upgrading to four programming sites, 16 sockets. Okay, Scott, good seeing you, man. COVID appropriate uh, handshake there. Uh, we sure appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks, uh, everybody. Thanks for coming.